Salve, we hail. And now, another proudly we hail. One of radio's outstanding dramatic half hours, starring Lee Tracy, and presented transcribed by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your star and host on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished Broadway stage, screen, and radio star, Lee Tracy. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart, and hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Lee, I believe you said you're particularly impressed with this story. Yes, Ken, I am. We travel to the Near East for a story of a man's journey for revenge. The story of what happened on that journey. The story of his appointment in Capernaum. And now, with your star, Lee Tracy, in the role of Martin, your Army and your Air Force present the Proudly We Hail production of Appointment at Capernaum. <laughs> It was near sundown when the man and woman came to Tiberias by the Sea of Galilee. The man had a cold, hard-set face. There seemed to be grim purpose in all his movements. The woman, pale and shadowy, with a look of inner sadness in her fawn-like eyes, followed quietly in his wake. At the ancient city's one modern hotel, he signed the register with a bold, slashing scrawl, Mr. and Mrs. Martin Fenway, New York City. What are you doing there by the window? Not good for your cold. I'm thinking. Thinking of what? How old this city is. The sea out there and all that's gone on here. There's a feeling of timelessness and, and peace. I wish we could have come here to enjoy it. Perhaps you're forgetting... No, I'm that... forgetting nothing. Even if I could, you wouldn't let me. I suppose you'd like to give it all up. Now that it's nearly done. I don't think it matters to you any longer, Martin, what I'd like. That's not so, Jen. This is as much for you as it is for me. Is it? The thousands of miles we've traveled, and the time and the money we've spent for one thing, and it's an evil thing. Evil's been done. I want to erase it. Who are you, God? I guess your memory isn't as long as mine. It's longer, Martin, because I can still remember our life before this started. We can go back to that when it's over. Oh, no, we can never go back. You're not the same man. Only one thing drives you now. Nothing else is important. And when you've finished it, you'll never be able to go back to what you were. Nor will I. You were as determined as I when we started. You said we'd never be able to look each other in the eye if we... Well, can we now? I can. I can look anyone in the eye. I might have known you'd go soft. Not soft. I'm tired. I'm sick to death of the whole horrible thing. You say I've forgotten, but... But how can I forget when every move we've made since it happens reminds me of it? Well, it'll soon be over. Neither you, Jen, nor anyone else on this earth can stand in my way. Do you speak English? Sure. English. Arabic, Hebrew, Greek, anything. No, oh, beg your pardon. I didn't expect to find an American bartender here. Well, most Americans don't, but they get over it. I didn't mean it like that. Name's Mike. What do you have? Scotch and soda. It'd be nice if we had any scotch. How about brandy and soda? Got some bad brandy. Fine. You just get here? A little while ago. From the looks of things, your hotel isn't doing much business. Don't do much in the fall except on weekends. Don't know why. Best time of the year around here. What little I've seen seems to be a very picturesque area. Picturesque, huh? Yeah, try this. Real picturesque. Rancid, isn't it? Uh, I suppose you could get used to it. You had to. <laughs> I'll make you one of my specials. No, well, I won't ask what's in it. No, I like a cigarette? Oh, yeah, thanks. Kind of rare around here. Keep the pack. I got plenty. I guess I had you pegged wrong. What do you mean? Well, forget it. Here on business? Uh, well, no, no, not e not exactly. My wife uh, she wanted to see the country. I right, give this a whirl. Better? Perfect. Hmm. What is it? Well, for lack of a better name, we'll call it a mic. 
Where are you from in the state? New York City. Chicago used to be my town. How'd you ever come to settle here? Well, back during the war, I was stationed down in Egypt. Got a furlough and didn't know what to do with it. Somebody said, why don't you go see Palestine? Take a tour of the country. It's a kind of silly way for a guy like me to spend my leave, but I did it anyway. Came here, stayed till I had to go back. There's something about the place that got me. Something I've never found any place else. Well, when I got out, I came back here. I've been here ever since. Mm, you should meet my wife. It hit her the same way. Yeah, stick around a while, it'll hit you too. Think so? How'd you come? From Haifa? That's right, on the bus. <laughs> Some bus. Huh? <laughs> yeah, we broke down in Nazareth for a while. Yeah, it's a good place to break down. Have a look around? Mm, my wife did. So, you know, it's just possible an old friend of ours living around here somewhere. You know anybody by the name of Richard uh, Kent? Kent. No. Can't say as I do, and I know about everybody from here to Capernaum. Place is filled with my wife's relatives. Oh, you brought your wife here? No, no, I married a local girl. Now, what's this guy Kent look like? He's big, bald, and about 45. Yeah, it sounds like a guy named Henry Jordan. Does he walk with a limp? Yeah. Yeah. That's the man. I'm sure I know who he is. He lives in a big house up above Capernaum. He's a kind of strange duck. Acts like he had a good reason to change his name. What do you mean? No, well, doesn't seem to trust anyone. Acts like he's afraid of something or somebody. What's the matter? Hmm? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. Oh, uh, how about another one of those, uh, mics? <laughs> What are you thinking about, Jen? I was thinking of such a little sea, and yet it holds so much. You can almost, almost feel what happened here. The stars have a different look, and the wind is soft and quiet. Don't you feel it at all? I only feel one thing. Martin, do you love me? Yes. But, but not enough to give it up. If I gave it up, I might as well stop living. Do you call this living? Can't you see it's too late for me to turn back? Why have you got to torture me? Well, what kind of torture do you think I'm going through? <laughs> oh, I say that twins are very close. I know how close my brother was to me. Sometimes in the <laughs> night I can hear his voice crying out to me. I can never rest until I've paid that devil for what he did to him. Do you think if it had been me, Tim would have been willing to forgive and forget? I was willing to let the law punish Kent, but he escaped the law. And I know only one law now. Revenge. Will it bring Tim back? No. But he'll rest in peace. It's we who can never rest in peace. I love Tim, too. And at first I was weak enough to think that, that what you intended was just and right. But, but now he don't you see... It. I'll pay him back if it's the last thing I do. You better slow up. You don't know this road. That was missed, but we just passed through. Maybe you should have waited at the hotel. I couldn't have. How'd you get this car? Bartender at the hotel is an American. His name is Mike. He got it for me. <laughs> it's quite a relic to him. All the roads we've driven down. Strange this should be the last one. Why? Just another road. Why are you so blind, Martin? Don't you know where we are or, or what happened here? I read about it once. Oh, but now you've forgotten it. No, but this is no time to start remembering that sort of thing. As we forgive those who trespass against us. An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. That also came out of this land. And blessed are the peacemen. Save your scriptures. Look out! You all right? I wish you'd slow down. It's a bad spot in the road. I'll be careful. Maybe it would be better if you did turn us over. Oh. Ah, blaster. What kind of a country is You this? took the wrong turn at the fort. I know that now. I know that. A lot of good is doing it. Uh, oh. Here, look. You get in here behind the wheel. I'll get out and push. I'm afraid we're stuck fast, Martin. Now, do as I say. Now, put it in reverse. Let the clutch out slowly. All right. Now. Oh, oh. 
just no good. <laughs> We're in here up to our hubcaps. What do we do now? Spend the night here? Well, I could go and look for help if there was any place to look. Wait, aren't we close to the edge of the sea? I thought I caught a glimpse of it through the trees. What do you want to do? Swim back? Why don't we walk down to the shore and see if we can see some light? Yeah, uh, might just as well. Can't make a dollar here. Wonder if I should lock it. What for? Uh, good question. Shut it off. Now, watch your step. This cow track seems solid enough here. Yeah. We'll just follow it. Should have thought of a flashlight. Once your eyes get used to this kind of darkness, you can see quite a lot. What's different about this darkness from any other? It's complete. The only light is from the stars. Oh, I'm afraid that's not quite right. Look down what? there. Isn't that a light? Where? Watch where the trees are moving in the breeze. You'll see it. There. Oh, I see it. A light waving at us through the trees. Uh, better be careful. Oh. Don't know who it is. How welcome we'll be. How wonderful to have a house here. The cedar and the Lebanon trees behind them and, and to see almost at their front door. Save the rapture. Uh, here goes. Uh, they probably won't be able to speak a word of English. Maybe they go to bed early around here. Good Lord! You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star Lee Tracy in the role of Martin Fenway, we present the second act of... Appointment at Capernaum. Oh, Martin, let's get out of here. David, David, get out, get out, Schnell. Guten Abend, guten Abend, es tut mir leid. Sprechen Sie uh, American? Uh, Americanish. Yeah, uh, not so good, but, but some. Yes, I'm an um, American man and his uh, lady have come to call. Oh, oh, please, come in. No, we really don't want to bother you. Well, my car got stuck in the mud up the road a ways. I thought maybe if I could get some help, I, I could get it out. Oh, I know what you mean. There's a bad hole there. Uh, you must come in and uh, dress. No, thanks, really. We'd, We'd love to. It's very kind of you. I'm sorry that, that David frightened you. He would harm no one. To strangers, he is always startling. Uh, won't you sit down? We really can't stay. But we'll enjoy sitting down for a minute. I will get some wine. It is an occasion to see strangers, and especially from America. Good. Uh, Halinka, you must give them a bottle. Oh, of course. That's very kind of you, but we wouldn't think of it. Oh, why not? Why? Well, we, we wouldn't want to deprive you. <laughs> Deprive us? <laughs> the grapes will not stop growing on the vine. No, you will not deprive us. It is good to give something that, that has been given. We shall have your car ready shortly. David? It won't be long. I will fix some sandwiches. We're not hungry, thank you. Oh. Very well, then, if you like. You know I envy you living here. Oh, why should you? Oh, it's so quiet and so untroubled. You can hear the water laughing and the wind in the cedars. There's a clean, cool smell in the air. <laughs> there is all that. We have found some peace here. Even David. Are you from Germany? No, not my home, but Poland. Stephen and David were from Austria. Uh, David is Stephen's brother. His brother? Hmm, is that so strange? No, no. I, well, they, they just don't look the same. No. <laughs> Ah, David wasn't always like he is now. He had a voice once. A voice that couldn't be stilled, so they cut out his tongue. Oh, horrible. Yes, it was horrible. It was much horror and much killing. But, ah, that is all yesterday. Today we make a new life here. In the back of the house there are the vines, the garden, and some fruit trees. And in the front for the little way is the sea. And there are fish in the sea. And in the house, there is warmth and love. And three little ones tucked in their beds and growing. 
Yes. He has found peace here. And what is behind us can never hurt us again. I envy you to be able to forget. Well, we can never forget as long as we live. But we look ahead instead of back. To live in the past is to die. <laughs> That didn't take long, did it? <laughs> we have strong backs this weak head. Well, it's certainly very decent of you. We can't thank you enough. Can I pay you something? Because we, we gave you a hand when you were in trouble? No, sir. In, in helping, we have been paid. Thank you so much. The wine was perfect. If you can, when you come back, why don't you stop in again? I'd like that. Did you give them the bottle? No, I've got it right here. I'll, I'll guide you back. Uh, I have a lantern. Goodbye, madam, and thanks again. Goodbye. Goodbye, David. They were wonderful people. Yeah, they were nice. Oh, that poor guy. They have a lot more to forget than you. Why can't you forget? It's different. I know who killed Tim. With them, well, there were many people involved. It was a war. The principle is the same. But not the knowledge. You always have an answer. Because I'm right. I suppose it's silly to ask you to slow down. Yes. I'd say we were almost to Capernaum. How will you find this place when you get there? Mike gave me directions. Don't worry, I'll find it. That's a short curve ahead. I see it. You're going off the road. Watch that. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> what the devil is so funny? It's, it's almost as though something is, is trying to stop you from, from going... It'll take a lot more in a mud hole in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I suppose we better try and find our way back to the car. Seems we like we've been wandering around for hours. Well, I thought if we left the road and got down here by the water, we'd see a light. You think we can find our way back to the road? It shouldn't be hard. Uh, here, you'd better stop and rest. Sit down on this rock. Uh, oh, I am tired. What time is it? Uh, nearly two o'clock. Would you like a cigarette? No, thank you. Are you cold? No, no, I'm, I'm fine. This coat is warm. There's something here that kind of gets you, isn't it? So quiet. So very quiet. Then I... I know this has been rough on you. I, I wish there was another way out. There is, but you won't take it. Maybe we'd better try and find the road. What, what's the matter? Keep your voice down. Huh? There's a campfire just ahead at the edge of the cedar. What do we do? Seems to be only one man... We better go carefully. Some of these people aren't exactly civilized. You stay right here till I see what he's like. Be careful, Martin. Don't worry. I'll make plenty of noise. He'll know I'm coming. Well, uh, uh hello. Uh, now, uh, me, uh, American, uh, lost. You are welcome to share the warmth of my fire. You speak... To... I have traveled many places, and one tongue is as another to me. Again! It's all right. Come on. Uh, it's my wife. We uh, we weren't sure. There's nothing to fear in this place. I know. I can see that now. Could you tell us the way to the road? We're sort of lost. It's not hard to lose one's way in darkness. Uh, Jen, this this man speaks English very well. Sit, my child. You are weary. Thank you. And you also. Let the fire warm you. I have bread and cheese and a goat skin of good, clear spring water, if you would eat and drink. Well, I, I'm not really hungry. Do you know where the road is? The road to Capernaum. You are far from that road. It would be wiser to wait until daybreak before going on. Our, our car went off the road. Do, do you live here? Yes, I live here, my child. Do you know a man who calls himself... Henry Jordan? Yes, I know such a man. A man who lives his days in torment and his nights in fear. A poor, tortured man who has committed evil. 
And he's bent with the weight of it on his soul. How far away does he live? Near the ruins of Capernaum. How far is that? When it is light, you will see. You, you, you say he committed evil. How do you know? I have seen it mirrored in his eyes, etched in the lines of his face, twisted in his shrunken frame. He can find no peace as long as he lives. He is a man you should have pity for. Pity? I am a gleaner of wisdom and a teacher of truth, and I know many things. Let me tell you something of what I know. My son, your heart is filled with hate. You have not only missed the road to Capernaum, but in your blindness you have lost the path of life. You cannot undo evil by committing evil. That is God's work. In my father's house there are many mansions. That is written in your book, and I know it is the truth. Turn your hate into forgiveness before it is too late. Ha, 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 ha. How do you know all this? You have told me. I have? There are many forms of speech and many ways to read. Look into the eyes of your wife and what see you there. Does this, the woman of your heart, deserve to bear the yoke of your madness? Would you destroy love to suck the ashes of hate? Who art thou that thou can trample the heart of the doe to slay a poor man who is already dead in spirit? Listen, my son, for I can read you as the book. Open your eyes and look about you before they are closed forever. Sit here by the fire and let the night wind off the sea wash the fever from out your soul. I, I can't. I tell you, I can't. Martin, wake up. What? Oh, what? Oh, it's morning, and what a beautiful morning. Look at the sun rising over the hill. Where is he? I, I guess he's gone. I woke up, and there was no one here. I see. I think he was the strangest man I've ever met. It was like, like a throwback to, to biblical times. The way he talked, the way he looked. I've never met anyone. Jen, look there, down there. Those are the ruins. That must be Capernaum. And that house up there is where I'll find a man who calls himself Henry Jordan. So this is the end, Martin. I've come all this way hoping that something would turn you back. I see nothing will, so I'll... Thank God you've come. Thank God it's over. Kent. Well, who do you think I am? Have I seen so much? Blame your brother's ghost. Blame all the torments in hell. Blame the waiting. The waiting for you. Day after day, night after night. I knew you'd come. I knew you'd track me down. Well, now you found me. Get it over with. I can't stand it anymore. Martin, don't do it. Put down that gun. Don't. You murdered my brother, Kent. But, but I forgive you. I came to tell you that you need have no... Fear of me any longer. I won't harm you. Ever. Come on, Jen. Let's go down and have a look at the ruins. Our star, Lee Tracy, will return in a moment with a word about next week's show. June 14, 1775. Be it known to all persons present that as of this date, by order of the Congress of the United Colonies, presently in legislative session, the appointment of George Washington as General of the American Armies is confirmed. And he is empowered to recruit and enlist companies of riflemen for service... June 14, 1775, the birthday of the United States Army. 
When General Washington arrived at Cambridge, Massachusetts, and took command of the New England militia besieging the British at Boston, he found several thousand ill-assorted men composing the American line. There was no uniform. Homespun stood next to leather breeches. Coonskin caps vied with three-cornered hats. These men were patriots, but could hardly be called soldiers. They were armed, for the most part, with firelocks and muzzle-loading fowling pieces. And it is further ordered that active and vigilant officers be sent on this recruiting service. And it is of most importance that these recruiting officers be men held in high esteem with the people in the district in which they serve. The caliber of recruit must be high, remembering always that upon his shoulders rests the safety of our nation. The American Army must always be deemed an honor and a privilege. Signed, G. Washington, General Commanding. Today, the soldiers of the Army have come a long way from their first brothers-in-arms of 176 years ago. Today, the Army is composed of highly skilled technicians operating scientific weapons of intricate construction. The uniforms are adapted to climate and geography. Today, the United States Army is not composed entirely of men. There are thousands of women serving too, and thousands more are needed. These women do hundreds of jobs and do them well. Jobs formerly done by men now released to fight. Yes, it is a far different army of today whose birthday we celebrate. An army grown through the years to greatness from the little handful of men General Washington recruited 176 years ago. An army that protects America today as the founding army of the revolution protected us. The army is the oldest of the services. And on June 14, 1951, proudly we hail the men of June 14, 1775. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Lee Tracy. Appointment at Capernaum was written by DeWitt Cup. The music was composed and conducted by John Guarnieri. This program was produced under the supervision of Charles and Rogers Productions and directed by Charles Wilkes. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Lee Tracy. Next week on Proudly We Hail, you'll meet... Ken Murdoch, a pilot with a problem. Our play is called Straight and Level, and it's a thrilling story of a jet airplane test pilot. We hope you'll be with us over the same station. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.